Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, you've all heard about Cebu, Manila, Subic Bay, Angola City, all of these places being great retirement destinations for foreigners, but there's a Philippines province about to make a big jump in competing for industry, tourism, and foreign retirees. Hey guys, don't forget to share and subscribe and give us one of these if you enjoy the video. So you guys might be curious, Scott, where are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about Bataan province on the island of Luzon. You probably have heard before pronounced Bataan or Bataan. Uh, the way that it's pronounced in the Philippines, as close as I can pronounce it, is Bataan. So why Bataan? What makes it appealing for foreign retirees? So I've got some things here I wanted to go over and mention to everybody who may not be familiar with the province. So it borders the West Philippine Sea and Manila Bay. Uh, the entire province population is about 850,000 people. So not a heavily populated area. So if you're traveling around Bataan, you kind of get a bit of a small town feeling. There's not uh, heavily populated cities. There are no large cities in the province. There's no a uh, great amount of traffic congestion or anything like that. It's more of a spread out uh, farm community type feel. So, so it gives you a little bit of the small town feeling when you're traveling around. Belonga City is the city that we live in where our, our home is in the Philippines. It's kind of a mid-sized city. Uh, it has everything that we need. We have all the shopping available that we would want. We have restaurants, many restaurants available as far as American food goes. We have all of the fast food places that are in the Philippines, such as McDonald's. Uh, we have a Burger King. We have Kentucky Fried Chicken, all of those typical things that you see. Uh, we also have many pizza places. We have Domino's Pizza, uh, Shakey's Pizza. There's an S&R Pizza now. And then uh, for a little bit, more uh, of a restaurant type dining. We have places such as TGI Fridays, which has a full range of American food on their menu. So plenty of places to eat, good shopping, good grocery stores, um, good health care facilities. So there's really not anything that we need that's not available to us in the city of Belonga. Uh, there's not very many foreigners there now, especially in the city we live. You don't see many foreigners. We probably have more than the other areas in Bataan. I would say Belonga probably, if I'm guessing, has the highest concentration of foreigners, but there's not many. We don't see many around town and don't know of a whole lot. So uh, with that, with not having a lot of foreigners, uh, it also makes the province pretty affordable for living. It has a low cost of living compared to other places that are more heavily populated, some of the bigger cities, uh, very affordable living in Bataan. We also have great tourism available. Uh, within the province, there's places like Las Casas, Filipinas de Acuzar. You might have heard of that. A lot of people just refer to that as Las Casas. Uh, that is in Bagak, and I believe it's probably one of the top tourist destinations in all the Philippines in my opinion. It's one of the nicest places uh, that you can visit in the Philippines. Uh, also there is Camaya Coast in Maravelas, very popular with people from Manila. There's a place called Rancho Bernardo which is kind of a upscale high-end resort and I believe that's in Bagak. Bagak could be in Morong, I'm not sure. Plenty of World War II history throughout the province. The Bataan Death March is well known to many foreigners. There are monuments throughout the area related to the Death March. There are kilometer markers every so often along the trail of the Death March. Uh, we have Mount Samat, which is a monument to the sacrifices of World War II. We also have Vista Tala and Sinig Tala mountain resorts. And then Bagak and Morong both have many beach resorts, so a lot of places for tourism that, that many people have never been to or heard about. Uh, it's easy to navigate around the province. As I said, we don't have extreme traffic really in any areas. And then the Roman Superhighway also connects the province 
north and south. And on the northern end of that is the Essitex, which is the expressway to Subic, takes you to Zambales, Alangapo area. And we're about 40 minutes where we live from Subic. And then also you can, at the same point, you can take the NLEX to Clark, the Angola City area, for uh, more shopping and restaurant options, entertainment options. And then that also takes you around to Manila. And then if you continue further north on Luzon, you have Baguio, which is a very popular mountain area, very popular with tourists. They have a summer home there for the president because of the cooler temperatures in Baguio. It makes that a very popular area for people. Uh, you also have Vegan City, which is an old Spanish uh, city. They have, still have a lot of the uh, buildings and streets intact, Spanish style. Uh, buildings from many years ago uh, and then if you continue further on the northern part of Luzon is Pagadpud which a lot of people refer to as the Barakai of the north so a lot of tourism in Bataan and also all around nearby so to the west is Zambales which has Subic Bay uh, San Antonio San Felipe a lot of popular destinations over there and for us, it's about a two hour drive to San Antonio from where we are. So how will foreigners be lured to Bataan? What is going to change that's going to bring more tourism industry and all of this to the province? Well, the thing that I think is going to change this coming in a few years is the Cavite Bataan interlink bridge. Many of you may have heard of this. Uh, it's a 32.15 kilometer bridge, nearly 20 miles, that connects Cavite and Maravellas. It'll be the longest bridge in the Philippines, and it was first proposed in 1987, but I think they felt that it wasn't feasible or was going to be too difficult of a project at the time, and it never materialized. Uh, it's supposed to cut the drive time down between Maravellas and Cavite from four to five hours down to 40 minutes. Uh, and it's also expected to alleviate congestion in Manila because right now you have traffic from Manila going north on the Inlex and coming around the bay and down through Pampanga and into Bataan. So now it will just be able to take a lot of that traffic right across the bay and free up some of that traffic going north out of Manila and coming south into Manila. So construction was to begin in 2024. It's been recently pushed back to early to mid 2025 due to some financing negotiations or some issues with the financing trying to uh, settle on the best financing option or deals. Uh, one thing about it, it offers foreigners another great option to live just outside of Manila, but separated by Manila Bay. So you, you're not far from Manila, but yet you feel like you're pretty detached from Manila. You still have available in Manila quality health care, the VA clinic, uh, lots of shopping and entertainment areas, the U.S. Embassy in Manila, and then you have the NAIA, the Ninoy Aquino International Airport in Manila. So that can be really appealing to a lot of foreigners to have all that available to them just across the bridge. So for us right now, we have about a three hours on average, three to four hour drive from where we live around the bay to Manila. So in the future, we would probably drive from our place to Maravellas, from Balanga to Maravellas, which is about 45 minutes and then 40 minutes across the bridge. So we would be about an hour and a half. Uh, and then you have to drive on into the city of Manila. So maybe to the airport, we're looking at about two hours maybe instead of three or four. So a little bit better for us, but I think the, the area that's gonna be the most heavily and directly impacted is gonna be Maravellas. I think that uh, potentially a huge boost for Maravellas and tourism and industry and all these things. I think it will greatly boost 
tourism for Bataan and Zimbales because Zimbales already is a very popular area for people coming from Manila, but it's such a long journey for them to get there. Uh, this shortens it quite a bit. You know, places like Camaya Coast and Maravellas are fairly new. That's a fairly new place, but it's becoming very popular. And I think it will be even more so once people are able to just drive across the bay and go directly to there. Right now they have a ferry available which uh, works out pretty well also. But I think the bridge will bring a lot more people. Uh, there is a proposed uh, connection to Corregidor Island, which I don't know if will happen or not, but it would definitely increase tourism to Corregidor if you could just take your car and drive directly to Corregidor, not have to schedule a ferry ride or something and kind of be able to come and go as you please. So that's a possibility. I don't know if they've decided if that's a sure thing or not yet, but that is an, that will be an option that they can add. So I think the biggest change really in the whole province is gonna be Marvellas because now rather than everyone coming around Manila Bay from the north end of Bataan, entering through Pampanga, where really a lot more of the business and industry is in Pampanga. It's kind of the first stop from Manila before you continue on into Bataan. And now Maravellas, people coming from that direction is kind of gonna be the gateway to Bataan. So big change is probably in store for Maravellas. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more housing and things available there a lot more industry and then they've talked about how it may potentially boost the shipping industry in Maravellas and kind of make it a international port right there uh, because of its location right in Manila Bay. So a lot of changes coming to Bataan in the near future and maybe a big boost in foreign retirees because a lot of people don't uh, talk much about Bataan. You don't see a lot of people on YouTube uh, from there making videos or talking about that area. And a lot of people never been there and don't know much about it. So uh, I think that's probably going to change over the next several years and you're going to see a lot more people moving to Bataan than what's there now. Uh, hopefully not too many because we don't want things to change too much from the way they are, but uh, as always, you know, progress and change brings more people. So we'll see what the future holds, but I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. If you have not heard of that bridge project, uh, I think it's going to bring major changes to the province and maybe it's some place that you might want to look at in your future retirement. If you're trying to think about where you want to settle somewhere, you may want to live. Uh, Bataan might be a good option for you, especially in the near future. If you guys enjoy the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe and consider becoming a channel member. Thanks for watching everybody. Take care and we'll see you on the next video. Na nagsasurvey ng uh, seabed ng ating karagatan sa Manila Bay ay nandyan na po at sinasurvey na yung uh, underwater para po dun sa Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge. The construction of the $2.1 billion Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge has been pushed back for a second time to the year 2025. Public works and highways citing funding issues is the reason for the delay. Well, the, the bridge once completed will have sufficient links with major thoroughfares in Cavite and Bataan so that it will truly be a facilitator of interconnectivity and linkages among our people and our provinces.